We're Google partners or Facebook partners. As though this matters. What this really means is I had 45 minutes to waste and I wasted it. There's no real value proposition. Google's education is flawed. So if somebody says we follow all the rules or we do what Google tells us to do, you don't want to work with that agency. Hello and welcome to the Perpetual Traffic Podcast. This is your host, Ralph Burns. This is the show where we share cutting edge strategies on acquiring leads and sales to acquire more customers for your business. And today it's just me and Kasim. Uh, we're, we're, it should be. I know, it should be. It should be. Back to just us, back to basics. And today I think is going to be a fun episode because we are just going to shred into every crappy agency that's out there on the market. <laughs> Um, and, uh, yeah, how to sniff your out your agency's BS is the name of this. Now, we, you know, the viewpoint is slightly skewed cause we are both agency owners and we um, bullshit quite often. So and I we think have, we're actually experts on the topic. I think we are, we are, we are. So there is, you know, some, some bullshit has been slung in the past. And, uh, the funny thing is, is that, um, I don't know whether you realize this, Kasim, but I'm actually doing a lot of the sales right now for Tier 11, which is actually a lot of fun. This is the job that I was originally trained for. My sales was the first job out of college, you know, and then I, sales guy, sort of moved myself through the corporate ladder and realized I hate I hated the corporate ladder um, because you can fall from it very quickly. And I was fired twice, and so then I had to start this whole thing, but. So I'm back doing sales, which is actually a lot of fun. So I'm realizing, like, especially talking to new businesses and that might want to work with Tier 11, like this this BS that's been slung at other places is, uh, it's quite thick. It's quite heavy. It's quite stinky. So uh, we're going to be talking about that here today. Um, and I, I am holed up in a, a WeWork in, uh, in Boston, like literally... I'll show you for everyone who watches on YouTube. It's like, I almost feel like I'm in, inside a, a phone booth or like a bus. I'm not quite sure. Cause it's got one of those like doors that open up in the middle. You're so a phone booth. that's about to get repossessed. Aren't they, aren't they in bankruptcy? Yeah. 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 Like, I don't know. Like at any given moment, there might be movers coming in here, like taking out the furniture. So. Yeah. Well, they're going to take out the booth. Some dude's going to come with a dolly <laughs> with you, with you in it and just like cart. That's what happens with with fractional customers is they seize the customers too. You're going to be put up for auction. It's true. <laughs> They're going to lock me in the booth. Yeah. So you know, Dude, what a YouTube... horrible those guys. It's such a phenomenal model. Imagine launching just the bad luck. Imagine <laughs> launching fractional office space 48 hours before COVID. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's God hates whoever because it's such it's a great idea. Great <laughs> idea. Right place. Right time. Right market. Right yeah. use. Right yep. asset class. And yep. then all of a sudden it was like, what if we just invent a disease that destroys this very specific <laughs> business for sure? Uh, here we are laughing, but they, somehow they survived. Oh, there's. Uh, I thought they were. I, th I thought they were literally in bankruptcy. Are they still yeah, around? Yeah, yeah. I uh, I watched actually a documentary on uh, oh, it was Netflix, I believe, like the making and breaking of a forty-seven billion dollar unicorn but there's been a bunch of documentaries on it i think they came out of bankruptcy mm. but it still exists so i am here actually in a we work and there are like 11 we works in boston just oh, dude, starbucks work. it's you yeah, know they're like there's starbucks. as many we works as there are starbucks right which was right. also a great plan <laughs> it's a great plan and the coffee is actually a little bit better than starbucks believe it or not like, oh look at that well the bar is yeah. low ralph i bar guess you're in low. boston you people drink duncan and like it <sighs> we, we do yeah. We do. Yeah. Although my wife doesn't drink Duncan. She's sort of a, a coffee snob, but I still, you know, I, I still hang with Duncan. I dude, I, I bet I you I that will dunks. degrease an engine. I bet you you could use Duncan coffee for, I dude, I, I bet you it kills rats. Yeah. It yeah. does, actually. Like when I've got rust on my, my uh, the spokes of the wheels of my car. Yeah. Duncan. Right. Throw Duncan, it on there. That's exactly yeah. right. Yeah. Next morning, rust. All rust gone. is gone. Rust the rust probably comes from the donuts, though. <laughs> well, the yeah, the clog in the arteries probably comes from the donuts as well. So, uh, so anyway, so we, if we get carted off and you're watching at home here or you're listening, um, 
I'll still we, be here. You'll be gone. Yeah, I'll be gone, but Kassim will carry on. Traffic. Yeah. yeah, so if you are watching, you should be watching, actually, because we now broadcast these over on YouTube. I've said this a million times, but we're going to keep saying it. Uh, perpetualtraffic.com forward slash YouTube. We are releasing these almost in real time. We're just about like the day it's released on uh, Apple uh, Podcasts. And over on perpetualtraffic.com, it gets released over on YouTube where we might be like 24 hours off, but it's pretty darn close. So, do these uh, yeah, so definitely check us out. Yeah. So they, they tend to like you. The perpetual traffic video team tends to like your thumbnails. Hmm. I don't know why that is. You know, I, just, I gave them a lot to work with. I gave, gave them a variety of poses. You just got to yep. go give them more poses and then they'll. They'll cozy up to you. I think they're just kind of tired of any of my poses. But mm. yeah, yours have a lot of hair in them, so which yep. is always good. Uh, yeah, I've got more stupid, goofy looking poses. But anyway, just that onto itself is worth going over to perpetualtraffic.com forward slash YouTube. See what we're doing over there on the YouTubes and perpetual traffic is there for you. We are multimedia now. So before we get into today's conversation to rip every one of our competitors out there, we're not just doing this because it's fun to mess with our competitors, but we're doing it to ruin their business, to ruin their business. But we're doing it for you, the listener, so that you avoid these pitfalls, because there's a lot of BS being slung out there. Just look at all the sites. It's crazy. And uh, you know, it takes one, no one to a certain degree. So I feel uniquely qualified to be able to do this critique today. Um, but before we get into that, uh, you have yet another nugget because you came from that driven mastermind thing and that is just nugget rich. So what's another one? This one's dirty. It's a dirty trick, Ralph. Dirty. Uh, these must, are my- must have come from Perry. These are my favorite. This one's mine. I, I come up with all the dirty tricks. Perry just uses them better than me. Hmm. Um, this would have won me Wicked Smart if I was allowed to compete in Wicked Smart. This is how good this one is. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if you don't mind me patting myself on the back. So, well, what you know, you're, you're building it up way too much, and now people are going to be like, no, it's sucks. even better than how I'm building. It. Like, people are going to be like, oh, you know what? He set the bar high, and then he hurdled it. Wow. Yeah. For confidence. Ah. Uh, um, you have to commit now. I'm I'm too deep. I can't, <laughs> no. can't backpedal. Pressure's yeah. really on. Uh, so what many people do not realize is you do not need to use the same URL as the origination of the traffic in your remarketing. I'm going to say that again in a different way. If somebody, uh, clicks on an ad or even finds you organically and goes to your website and your, your website's abc.com, when you run a remarketing campaign, that remarketing campaign is based off of a pixel that could be, it could belong to any account. So you could remarket for xyz.com, which you think like, okay, that makes sense. Fine, that's benign, you know. But here's the dirty trick, which I love. If somebody goes to perpetu- or if somebody goes to tier eleven, let's say they go to tier eleven.com, mm-hmm. uh, and then they leave. The thing that you're used to doing is remarketing tier eleven. Hey, come back. We love you. We want you. We need you. But what if they started seeing editorial ads, content videos from um, agencynewswire.com talking about the best agencies in the world. And Tier 11 just happened to be number one every single time. And now, you, I see you smiling. I hurdled it, didn't I, Ralph? Like this, it's, it's a dirty little trick, man. But especially with remarketing. I know how it's done. That's why I'm smiling. But yeah. Anyway, keep going. With remarketing being effectively free, you're taking somebody who is interested in you. And, and because people, A, don't know how remarketing works, and B, don't even realize when they're seeing a remarketing ad, all of a sudden, they're going to think, oh, man, that was, that was the agency I was just looking. I didn't know they were. They're number one. Are That's they award a, winning. Award, yeah. Look how handsome that man is with his beard and his in his football shoulders. Uh, and you can you can edify and credentialize yourself, make it look like it's you know a coincidence or organic or you know who knows what they assume, and nurture prospects uh, ostensibly through word of mouth. Mm. Yeah, I like it. I um, think I, I think it's a dirty little trick. I mean, I, I don't know as if it's dirty though. I, I mean, you know, that's the way to just get people's <clears throat> attention. It's just brilliant. I should have started there. 
we, like there's a reverse to this which works exceedingly well and i don't know why more people don't do it and quite honestly i don't know why we don't do it more is and we've had this conversation a bit on previous episodes where we talked about sort of this new paradigm, this new era of growth, how to achieve full funnel excellence. And one of the things I think that is another part to this is the reverse of that is setting up a brand or maybe a personal brand, like let's say Kasamaslam.com or whatever it happens to be, or, you know, something about like what your product is all about. Let's pick a fictitious product. Uh, you know, green juice, for example. So you green set up exists, Ralph. That's not well, fictitious at all. Well, a fictitious Leprechaun product juice. in the green juice niche. All right, how about in the uh, uh, pick pick your color, the purple juice niche. There you go. Okay, so you set up a site called purplejuicing.com, and you set up a Facebook page, Purple Juicing, and you feed content to individuals top of funnel about the value of purple juicing. Mm. And in your retargeting, you send them to the product, send them to your purple juicing product. Interesting. So this could be like a yin and a yang where your yes. top of funnel is editorial, your bottom of funnel is conversion, and then your bottom of the funnel remarketing is editorial. Yep. Aha. Uh -huh. So I, I see where you're going on this. Like yeah. I'm just, I, I get it. I understand it. I love it. Um, I think it's, you know, I don't think it's quite as dirty as you made it out to be. I don't know, man. So here's, I'll tell you how it gets dirty. You ready? What if um, somebody that you knew really well, and I, I don't do this, by the way, but I could. I, I And I swear to God, I don't do this, but I could. No. Uh, I um, had a real estate investment campaign, and I'm actually starting back up, incidentally. I want to get back into real estate, uh, specifically in syndication. But let's say that somebody wants to sell their house fast for cash, Okay. So you're in Boston, you go sell my house fast for cash, you're willing to sell for a discount because you don't want to go through realtors, closing costs, fees, you know, people tromping through your house, whatever. You land on my website, you think about selling your house, to me as an investor, you leave. And then all of a sudden you start getting editorial content from, you know, the, the, the Boston real estate watch.com saying the market's about to collapse time to get out, cost per square foot is oh, dropping, geez. average yeah. days on market are spiking, this data point, this case study, this whatever, whatever, whatever. And and I don't just do that with one site. I do that with 15. So you, especially an unsophisticated internet user, would have no idea that this is actually being forced upon you based off of your browsing history. Instead, I am manipulating you into feeling like your property is about to be worthless, so you come sell to me quickly. So this could get real dirty real quick. That's dirty. Dirty. That's dirty. Nobody do that. Don't do that. No. But you it, heard uh, it here first. Yeah, you did. So I think it actually plays into today's episode of like what to watch out for. It's Dude, skeezy, about dirty agencies. Skeezy marketing tactics. Yeah. And a borderline. And then, you know, skeezy agency promises and bullshit agency claims that we're going to like tear apart here today and yeah. uh yeah so thanks for setting the, <laughs> setting, setting the bar setting the frame from deception all the way through the entire episode which we're going to get into in uh, just after this quick break All right, we are back, and uh, we've got a long list here. Gosh, so we're just going to have to rip through this and rip through our competition and just rip everybody in the agency space on, on today's show um, because there's so much BS out there. I, I think I don't think the agency space is – well, the, I think the reason for this is one – this one problem is that there's 42,100 agencies. They're not all marketing agencies. Yeah, in Boston. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know if that's US or that's internationally, but it seems probably like US. There's Dude, a there's lot. There's such a low them. barrier to entry. There's a low barrier to entry. Like, yeah. hey, man, I know how to run Facebook ads. I'm going to set up, me, set me up an agency. Yeah. Or I so, don't. And I'm going to set me up an agency anyway, and I'll figure it out as I go. Right. 
Yeah. Right. When you read those articles, like 15 businesses you can start from home with no money, number one is always agency. Yeah. And it's actually usually numbers one, three, nine, and you know, like there's a bunch of right. different, it's like content agency, traffic agency, graphic agency. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it's, uh, I mean, if you have a modicum of expertise, you can probably get a client here or there. Yeah. And like, you know, if you need money, like you can do it. And we know plenty of people who need money and just use very deceptive tactics in order to get that money any way they possibly can. And the agency is a way to do it. So we're going to help you sniff through your agency's BS here. And I know you've got a list. I've got a list and we'll combine our lists here together to hopefully safeguard against you making a bad choice for your agency. At the very least, hopefully give you some takeaways, some questions to ask. And if you ever book a call with Solutions 8 and Tier 11, like ask these same questions. I encourage you to do that. How dare you? <laughs> you know, how dare you to, you know, question our expertise. But no, seriously, like you need to do this. Like this is a big choice. And what ends up happening is what really pisses me off is that if people don't ask these questions, they hop from agency to agency to agency. And then it's just like you're never going to find our true partner that way unless right. you actually know like really what you're looking for and what to watch out for. So these are today's watch outs. Um, so Kasim, uh, what do you got on number one on your list? We're Google partners or Facebook partners. As though yeah. this matters. What this really means is I had 45 minutes to waste and, and I wasted it. I did. Uh, which incidentally, we're Google premier partners, Ralph. That's how right. fancy we are. Yeah. Um, and, and there's nothing wrong with being a Google partner or a Facebook partner, but there's no real value proposition. I, I don't know. You can tell me what, how you feel about Facebook's education. Google's edu education is flawed. So if somebody yeah. says, we follow all the rules or we do what Google tells us to do, you don't want to work with that agency. Yeah. Because Google wants you to spend a whole bunch of money and not care about the results. I have found on the Google side... So few, and I know I'm going to piss off a lot of Google reps by saying this, so few reps that actually know what the hell they're talking about. All the good it's, ones are in Mountain View. If you're on the phone with somebody at Google, ask them, hey, man, where are you, where are you geographically? And if they say anywhere else, even if it's in the States, they say anywhere else other than Mountain View, the really good actual like know what the hell they're doing, mm -hmm. uh, Google reps are in Mountain View at Google proper. Right. And, all the rest of them, or A, most of those reps that you talk to don't even work for Google. They work for companies, I forget their name, I think one's called T-Tech, and another one, there's another really big one out there, they're just, they're just vendors that have at google.com email addresses, and they're effectively salespeople, and their KPI is just to get you to spend more. Yeah, oh, 100%. So the takeaway here is to ask, like, if you do talk to an agency that says, yeah, we're a Google partner, first question you should ask if you're a CMO or director of marketing or owner operator is, oh, oh that's great. Like, where's your rep based? Mm. You know, what's funny about that, man, is we don't have a rep. Mm -hmm. Google took away, and you guys might have one because you've been around longer than I, uh, Google took away agency dedicated reps. So there are agencies that still have them. Um but we don't have, we have reps on individual accounts, like large spend accounts, but I don't have an agency rep. I don't have anybody to, to call or to talk to. I, I have 200 clients. I have I 200 clients. Most of them just tap out at 30 and Google hasn't make. given me a single point of contact. We have, we have one or two, but it's like a rotation. I don't know why we would actually have one and you wouldn't. Like th that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I do. That. Well, I also talk just a boatload of shit. So I can see Google yeah. saying like, don't. Don't screw solutions eight yeah now on the meta side like hey we're a facebook partner first off you should say meta so yeah like get with the program facebook is it's like saying adwords i use adwords do you now do you really great yeah. it's awesome yeah you take your walker to the computer and use the adwords do you? i i i'm a i'm a yahoo pay-per-click expert <laughs> Uh, no, I mean, I think, uh, everybody says like they're a partner of, of, if they say fa Facebook, first off, it's bullshit. Mm. Uh, secondly, like you should be, we actually do have a meta rep who is quite good. Like she's, you know, and the team and her boss, her boss's boss, her boss's boss's boss. Like I know a lot of people at meta and these are high quality people. Now, are they running ads right now? Do they know in the trenches stuff like you do or, 
you know, like our media buyers do. No, they don't. But they bring us ideas and concepts that we probably wouldn't have thought of before because mm-hmm. like we're always like, well, what are the big brands doing? Like, what are the big ones doing? Like, tell us about that stuff. And of course, I mean, they always have their own agenda. Like they want us to be able to adopt their products and like they were way ahead of it on reels. Like, hey, tier 11, like yeah. use more reels. And like now we're like, reels are great, you know? So I think that if you have the right meta rev, it actually makes a huge difference. Um, but I'm skewed because we actually have one. And, but if somebody says like, do you have uh, you, oh, you have a Facebook rep, like ask them what kind of rep they have. If they don't know what it is, or if they don't know if it's a partner manager, partner manager is the key for agencies. Hmm. They're, they're bullshitting you. Like it's BS. And I know that department really, really well. And it's an exclusive club to be a partner manager. So I'm not saying that to tout tier 11. I'm just saying that if it's on their site, I would not necessarily uh, think that it's real, especially if they say they have a Facebook rep, which is like, or they have our Facebook partner. There's no such thing yeah. anymore. It's a meta business partner or a partner manager program. So anyway, so that one kind of blew that one out of the water. So a couple of takeaways there, which is important. Uh, second one, uh, I'm going to throw this one out is proprietary process, secret sauce and proprietary. This is the kill. This is the killer is proprietary tracking. Mm. And we are a data-driven company or a data-driven agency with a proprietary attribution system. Kasim, is there such a thing as a proprietary attribution system I that mean, you're aware of? There technically could be. Here's the thing. Like uh, Eric Huberman, mm-hmm. Hawk, mm-hmm. Uh, one of the best agency owners in the world, I think, $500 million agency. He actually built Hawk AI. He actually has proprietary software. Mm -hmm. but he has a $500 million agency. And that's about the minimum that you'd need to be in order to go build your own proprietary software. If you're dealing with an agency that doesn't look like they're venture backed and have hundreds of millions of dollars to pour into SaaS, I'd be real. I'd question, first of all, if you have proprietary software, then that stuff is built in a soup kitchen in, you know, uh, I don't know what some back alley, Chinatown <laughs> restaurant on the break of a bus boy who's just trying to make ends meet while he puts himself through college. You know what I mean? Like that's, there's no way you have your proprietary software, your little $10 million gross revenue agent and $10 million gross revenue for an agency is big, by the way, yeah. you know, like, so there's a little teeny tiny rinky dink agency all of a sudden has proprietary software exclusive to them that nobody else has. Well, if that were true, you don't want it. And if it's not mm. true, how about not work with people that are liars? Now, yeah. if an agency says, I'm not going to tell you my tech stack. Okay, that's good to know. You know what? It took me a long time to figure out the tools that we use. It, that's proprietary to me. Um, that's not the decision that we've made here at Solutions 8, but I can at least respect if an agency said, you know, we keep that, those types of things to ourselves. We're just here to do the work. We don't want to be usurped. Mm-hmm. Uh, fine. But the minute they're saying, oh, we have, you know, a, exclusive access to specific tools that nobody else has, I'm just like, okay, I bet you do. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's not. And as, as one executive once told me who shall remain nameless is that the majority of the proprietary attribution systems are Tableau backed by Google data studio or looker studio. And that's pretty much it. It's all the same crap. It's, it's basically, it's all the same crap. Now that's good. I mean, at least you got something, but it's not proprietary because everybody has that question is, is do you, do they, do they, enlist the assistance of potentially a third party tool, which might power their right. proprietary tracking software. That is a whole other thing. But the point is, is that to build that, I mean, we know the owners of a lot of third party tracking uh, attribution softwares, they are really hard to build. Yeah, And you, you need like PhDs and a team of engineers and millions and so to much get money. to that. And so yeah. much money. Dear God. And, I you mean, we tried building one our own, on our own. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like we, we tried it. It cost us like a quarter of a million dollars and it failed. Mm. Like, and we, but at least we gave it a shot. So now we use a combination of a lot of things. Wicked Reports is one of the ones that we use a lot. Obviously, North Beam, we've talked about them quite a bit. There's some good third-party tracking softwares out there. Um, 
you know, Google Analytics 4, obviously, for everything after the click. Like, there's a combination. Like, if you can get that from the agency specifically, as opposed to it being proprietary, unless they are a, you know, Madison Avenue, like, billion-dollar, like, valuation agency, chances are it's probably just Looker Studio, Mm. really, at the end of the day. So, with some prettying up on the front end, because they've got a nice software developer. Right. So proprietary watch out for that secret sauce and if they do have a secret sauce have them show like what it is like there should be a methodology to what they do but when it comes to attribution and data uh, drill down on those questions a little bit more as opposed to just sort of taking it at at, uh at first glance this is very similar to the supplement niche in a lot Mm. of ways like proprietary formula or like is in like almost <laughs> every supplement that's out there. Not in my purple juice brand, however, because my Ralph's purple juice is completely it's above organic. board. Yeah. Yeah, it's organic. It's, it's great. It's going to be a new market. Me and you are going into business together. Uh, so, all right. So watch out for that. So what's your next watch out? Um, we work with big brands. <laughs> we work with big brands. Here's the thing that I think is funny about that. Uh, and, and by the way, I've got some big clients. You've got some big clients. There's nothing wrong with having big clients. But big brands, large campaigns are easier. Uh, they might be a little bit more difficult to manage, but the actual nuts and bolts of the campaign is easier because you have a client that's actually paying what you need to be paid in order to do the job, number one. Number two, they have the ad spend that would be necessary to go out and make some mistakes. It's super easy to hide behind big spends. You have margin. You have the ability to make mistakes. If you see a small, nimble agency that has nothing but small clients, they're probably better, by the way. And I'll say this is a big agency now. So I'm a big agency, and I know for a fact that when I was small, I'm 200 clients, $100 million in ad spend. We were better when we were at 30 clients because there was you know seven of us, and Everybody was 100% hands-on and our clients were spending an average of like five to $10,000 a month. And if you made one mistake, you lost that client. It was over. So mm-hmm. we were still team six. And, you know, now I think we're still really, really good, but we're really good as, we're as good as an agency that is scaled can be. And so, you know, talking to all the businesses out there, there's a bunch of reasons to work with an agency that's scaled, by the way. I have more data than other people have. I, I have more, I can see on the horizon. I have more industries, more insights, et cetera. But if, I wouldn't discount those small agencies and I wouldn't let, don't let yourself be blinded by the big brand logo on somebody's website because I don't think that means anything. That just means I'm hiding behind ad spend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I think it's, I think it's good. And I think there's a lot of, (laughs) I've seen a lot of agencies that have those, those logos and I know for a fact they've never worked with us Mm -hmm. (laughs) either. So I did that. You want to hear something funny? I got, uh, so I've got a bunch of, I'm going to just let the whole, especially as a young, young man, I used, I thought I needed that. So like I worked, I got a video um, on MTV's ridiculousness. So I put, and I mean, that's actually, that's absolutely true. We shot a video uh, for another client, a small, small, small client. MTV called and said, can we use this on our TV show, Ridiculousness? And I'm like, yeah, absolutely. So we had MTV's Ridiculousness in our media mentions. Um, I did a a website for Hamilton Beach water filtration for a water filtration vendor, a guy who had an exclusive right from Hamilton Beach to sell the water filtration software just in Phoenix, Arizona. And I did his website. So Hamilton Beach's logo was on my website. I had to do it. I did, I did, uh, uh, a guy named Rick Hatch used to own the Harley Davidson dealership here before he ended up going out of business. And so I had Harley Davidson's logo on my website. Like uh, it's such an easy thing to spoof into game. You know, it's yeah. like, well, I got an email from the, an, uh, uh, employee at T-Mobile once and I, I responded with some advice. So technically they're a consulting client, you know? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> oh my God. That's classic. Um, yeah, there, there was an agency once that, um, we were in competition with and they were new and they basically took to all the badges from our site and just pasted <laughs> them on theirs. <laughs> and I remember telling, I remember telling one of our clients, like, do you know that these guys are claiming that they work with you? It was like, thank you. Uh, we, we've already sent us a alerted and legal. order. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Unbelievable. So watch out for that. It's not all that it appears. It's certainly a trust factor that, 
if you're doing like a CRO audit, everyone sort of picks up on that. Oh, you need trust factors, and but eh, they may or may not be completely above board. Mm. Ask them what they did. Hey, what did you do for Hamilton Beach? What work did you do for them? Yeah, you yeah. Tell saying? me about a campaign that you worked, or maybe right. one that you didn't that like, that didn't work, or how you turned them around, or results. Like, go specific on it. Like, call right. it out. I think it's I think it's definitely worthwhile. That's a good one there. Uh, one of the ones, one of mine is, uh, and I hate this, is they sell you what you want, but not what you need. Mm. This is a real, real problem in the agency world. So we've done secret shopping in other agencies, like dozens of them. We have team members that do this every now and then just to sort of make sure. And every single one is like, if you go in and say, hey, I want Facebook ads, like they will sell you Facebook ads. Twice. Twice over, not right. even looking at like what you actually need. And th there's a difference between what you want and what you need. And I think now actually doing the sales yet again, you know, for tier 11, which is, which is great. You really get to understand like businesses think that they need just more traffic, right? When in fact, sometimes it's not the thing that they, they really need. They want it because they think all I need to do is just pour more gasoline onto the fire which is very dangerous by the way i tried to do that this week this weekend in our outdoor fireplace nearly blew myself up don't ever do that um highly flammable that gasoline thing is it so yes they should have very, warning signs on, they on should gas have. canisters Rob. it wasn't my fault no <laughs> it wasn't a warning sign yeah gas caution canister. flammable thankfully the fire wasn't really going it was just smoldering mm. but then it like went poof and like blew what left my hair off um Anyway, the point is, is that, that this happens all the time. It's like you'll go and you'll think that Facebook ads is what you actually need for your business. When in fact, if you don't have tracking set up, if you don't have avatar deep dive research, if you haven't done at least a moderate amount of um, research and, and work that is done for messaging and hooks and all the things that are important that drive your creative, your front end creative, the, the Facebook ad side of the equation, and especially the tracking most like almost most importantly, like you need your pixel set up. You need like your, as Dennis, you says, you need your plumbing set up first and foremost. Maybe even you need it like offer augmentation. Maybe you're, if you ever have run any level of traffic to your offer, how do you know the world actually wants it? Like there should be some kind of, previous logic or previous proof that if you send cold traffic to your offer, you're going to get at least a pulse. And so a lot of people will come and just say, Hey, I need Facebook ads, but what they really need is like a new offer and they need messaging or they mm. need, you know, they need the track, like, the, like I said, the tracking setup is that all that stuff is sort of a precursor to everything that you do on the media side. And I know that you've seen that on Google. Like everyone comes to you guys for Google and like, what's the first thing that you typically set up? Not like you're an ad. Yeah. It's the tracking. Right. Yeah. So, uh, but what I think a lot of agencies will do is they will just go straight into the media buying and then you're just, you're just wasting your time because you're just doing the same thing that you were doing before. And there's really no differentiation. So, uh, selling you what you want, not necessarily what you need, I think is an important part. Uh, and then a part to that is my second part is guaranteeing results. That is total bullshit. Like there's no agency on the planet that can guarantee results. So there's, and there's an exception to that, which is just having a good guarantee. So it's, I, I guarantee results or you don't pay, which I've seen agencies do. Fair now, enough. But, but to the point that you're making, they're not guaranteeing results full stop. As a ubiquitous truth, they're just assuming the risk, right? Like I think that's fair. I'd never do that, by the way. I'm I've got way too many clients beat my down my door. I'm 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 fat and happy, man. But if I yeah. were a young, hungry, nimble agency, and I said, "Hey, I, I a performance guarantee. I guarantee. I I feel so confident in what I can do. If I don't have you, you know, at this specific threshold within three months, I'm not going to charge you, or I'll stop charging you until I bring you back. Whatever it is, I'm fine with that." But as soon as somebody says, you know, guaranteed top page of Google, now I'm like, okay, you're a liar and you're stupid. Putting your money where your mouth is, I think, is an important is an important one. It's hard to do because 
this agency thing isn't cheap. Like, no, yeah, dude, human it's, human yeah, capital is expensive. Yeah, I think it's 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 easier to do when you're when you're a solopreneur, or let's say yeah. you're you know two partners working together in a basement, and you're just grinding. Yep. You don't have anything to do anyway. You know, you're right. dying for clients. So right. that's my advice. If you're a young agency listening to this, go do that. Show yeah. up and say, look, hey, we're brand new. We're trying to figure this out. Uh, I want to work with you. The benefit you get is you get my complete attention and I'm going to work myself into a bloody nub until I make it work. The disadvantage and the risk to you is I'm probably going to make some mistakes. And you're going to find the businesses that are like, you know what? I like that. I've been there. I'm going to take a shot on you. Yeah. I think it's actually, it's a, it's a really good, it's the last thing in the world we need is like another agency costume. So I hate the fact that you're actually trying to pr- promote more agencies in this world. But if I were to start again and I had my back to the wall, gun to my head, had to burn the boats, I would absolutely do that. Mm-hmm. And first client we ever took was a friend of mine and I charged him a hundred bucks a month. I was like, I don't you're my first real client. I have to charge you something. Right. And I'm like, how about a hundred? He's like, great. Like that was about, and I didn't guarantee results, but I worked for nothing. I worked like 40 hours a week for him for a hundred dollars a month. And our stuff eventually started to work. Yeah. Isn't it always Low a surprise when that happens? You're like, Oh my I was like, God. Oh my God, we're actually yeah. successful. And then I was like, now I'm producing results and I'm only charging him a hundred dollars a month. Yeah. I forget how it ended, but then I think I got some other clients and then he kind of moved on. Well, so you, but then you got a guy to offer a testimonial and a reference yeah. and you have a case study and you can actually speak with authority. I, yeah. I, I still see him to this day. Like every once in a while, like we'll just run into each other at like a, you know, house party or whatever in the neighborhood, <laughs> which is just, it's great. And like, yeah, he his business. I think he's retired now. But anyway, it was a good way to start. Hmm. And I think if you do start, like put your money where your mouth is, because what you're doing now is you're exchanging just your time for anything, and you're also learning. So I think it's it's very smart uh, advice. Even though, don't go start your own agency for Christ's sake. There's forty two thousand of us out there. Well, if anything, not only that, but I, I think AI is about to narrow. Yeah. It's cold. The herd is what I'd say it's going to do. So careful. Yeah, figure out. <laughs> yeah, figure out an AI tool. All right, so uh, we're going to get to the last couple of these. How to sniff out your agency's BS after this quick break. All right, we are back. Uh, how to sniff out your agency's bullshit here. Kasim, what do you got for us? <laughs> this is one of my favorite. Our team is made up of industry veterans. <laughs> Here's the problem with that. And I'm saying this as an old guy, right? I'm, I'm a gray beard now. Uh, I'm at the halfway point of life. The smartest marketers in the world are 14 years old. They're you know almost prepubescent. We're... The veteran thing doesn't play very well in the digital sphere. So I just be real careful about throwing that one around. You need some maturity for right. sure. But don't discount those kids. I see it all the damn time. I just did a consult with two young men out of Australia. Um, shout out to my boys, Nathan and Sebastian. And I think if memory serves, they're 22 and 23 years old. Yeah. And they are freaking brilliant with a capital B. They're just beyond intelligent. They had the best processes I've ever seen. Blue Sense Digital. Go, go Google Blue Sense Digital just to give them a shout out. Um, but they're, they're super de duper young. And so if you were to discount them, you'd be missing out on what I think is the next up and coming agency. Um, so, you know, the industry veteran thing is just like, uh, man, I don't know if you wanted just an agency of, of just me and Ralph. Like if you've got one or two of us at the top, that's okay. Right. But, you know, the, the whole kit and caboodle, I'd be real careful with them. Yeah. If all your media buyers are, are you know, are, <laughs> are Google people from 20 years ago, like they've been doing it for 20 years, I would be very concerned mm. about that. Skags. Yeah. We're running Skags. 
Yeah. You updated your <laughs> negative keywords today? That's right. That's right. Broad match, exact match. Yeah. Phrase match. Um, no, like it, that is something to watch out for. I mean, I do think, you know, in defense of us, a little bit on the, the grayish, beardish side, although you don't have the beard anymore. But uh, the point is, like, you should actually, I have no issues with management being a little bit more, more on the veteran side, but mm-hmm. like, all the people that work for us here are like in their 20s. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm, that's not just saying like it's only those people, uh, but I am saying that, like, Especially if you're on social, that is that is an that is an asset in a lot of cases. Mm. And uh, you know, the industry veterans, I think, bring some measure of maturity and experience to the table. But if that's the thing that the agency is touting above over anything else, I think it's it's well, a bit of a misnomer. Depends on the agency. Like if you're an SEO agency, okay, industry veteran. If you're a TikTok agency, veteran of what exactly? Right. What is it that you think that you have some legacy knowledge that helps in this brand new sphere and arena? Yeah. The platform is what, like four years old? Right. Three years? Yeah. Maybe? I'm a veteran of TikTok. Yeah. I've been doing it since 2020. <laughs> you know? Like, really? Yeah. All right. Uh, what's your uh, What's your last couple here? Award winning. If anybody ever says their award, first of all, I've got awards on my website. I'm proud of them. Sure. Uh, but go Google the award, and ninety percent of the time they paid for that award because there are companies that will say, "Hey, you're the best Google Ads agency. We're so proud of you, etc." Uh, sign up here for your three thousand dollar plaque, and we'll send it straight to you. And then you get the plaque and the thing and the badge and whatever. Yep. Um, I also love a, we're a one stop shop. Oh. One Good stop one. shop. Yeah. So if you need like uh, Ryan Dice had this real funny part of his keynote where he used to talk about uh, a, a, he, he was driving by a store in Texas and, and the sign said bookkeeping and lawnmower repair. <laughs> and that's what one stop. That's how different these proficiencies are. That's how different. If you really think about it, funnel creation and Google ads. I think bookkeeping and lawnmower repair have more to do with each other than creating funnels and managing Google ad accounts. <laughs> and my very last one is, this is the best one. We specialize in every industry. <laughs> oh, we special. You know what that's like? That's like saying, I'm monogamous with all of the women I'm currently dating. <laughs> I am right. committed to all of them. And I'm, <laughs> I'm proud to wear that on my sleeve. I am fully committed to the 27 women that I'm dating. Right. That's right. That's it. Oh my God. All right. Well, those are, uh, those are some good watch outs here. Uh, (laughs) how to sniff out your agency's BS is the name of today's show. And, uh, make sure you check us out over on YouTube. We'll, uh, (laughs) let us know if you found this the least bit helpful because, um, I think there's a lot that's out there that you got to watch out for at the end of the day. This is a, this is a marriage between your business and them don't treat it like you're just dating them and just you got to vet you know an agency you you really do Mm. and if they i think if they oversell you or over promise you that's a huge warning sign in a lot of ways and you know some people do it that way and that's fine and i mean you have to sell the sizzle to a certain degree but at the end of the day like do you trust them to make good choices to scale and grow your business and I think we've given you some some things to watch out for here, and maybe even some questions to ask to make sure that you don't make that mistake because agency hopping sucks. Uh, and uh, for you and for the agency. So thank you for listening. Uh, make sure that you subscribe and leave a rating wherever you're listening to this podcast. Let us know what we can do better over at perpetualtraffic.com forward slash better. It does actually changed the course of perpetual traffic history here Kasim. it really has changed so much and uh, we didn't do a shout out for our ratings and for subscribing and leaving a rating because we've got a couple we'll do that on our next episode so thanks for everybody who has left a rating and make sure that you do do that it certainly helps uh, get a wider listenership and help other digital marketers like yourself follow me over on linkedin and Kasim on twitter Go back and listen to previous episodes. And like I said before, check out our YouTube channel at perpetualtraffic.com forward slash YouTube. All resources and show notes are at perpetualtraffic.com. On behalf of my awesome co-host, Kasim Aslam. Peace.
Until next show, see ya.